So many of you know that I bring integrated pest management practices into my home, which is essentially using beneficial insects against pestiferous insects in the home. And I wanted to show you my special guest that just flew in. This is Mr. or Mrs., who knows, Lacewing. This is the mature form of your green lacewing larvae. And it just so happens that I'm doing this pest episode and I have a mature lacewing come and fly right on the table that I'm presenting at. I mean, what are the chances? <laughs> But I actually um, have many questions that have come in ever since I've done my first beneficial insects episode two years ago. And people have asked, well, what happens after the larvae mature? And of course, it depends on what type of beneficial insect you're bringing in. But in the case of green lacewings, which is something that I bring in fairly often, um, it becomes a mature bug and it develops wings. And in this case, I live in the Northeast United States and this is a native species here and it's totally okay to let that fly out and release, especially if you're doing it in the spring, summer, or fall months because that's when mature lacewings are around. In this case, I don't mind this lacewing flying around my house because if there is enough food for it, i.e. non-beneficial bugs, then it will maybe find a partner, partner up and actually put out eggs in some area where there are non-beneficial insects. And um, I've never seen eggs in my house, but I have seen them outdoors and they grow on these long, thin, sticky stalks with the egg on top. And that's actually to protect it from ants because the ants can't like crawl up that sticky stalk. So I'm not going to release this insect. Of course, if it wants to fly out my window, it can, but um, I hope it could find actually a little bit more residence. So I don't get squeamish about this, but to answer your question on whether beneficial insects are right for you, if you get squeamish, or if somebody in your house gets squeamish about bugs, then maybe beneficial insects is not right for you. However, if you love your plants and you are stressing about the pests that are on your plants and you have a lot of plants, then you may want to try to get over the hump of releasing beneficial insects indoors. Now, many of our beneficial insects actually fight the non-beneficial insects and in either larval or mature stage. In the case of the mature lacewing, it doesn't really feast on pests the same way that it does when it's in the larval stage and it's actually growing. In some cases, ladybird beetles, I never see them as larvae, which they're very voracious in both the adult stage as well as the larval stage but I never see them as larvae. So you only get them as adults, which is a little bit more challenging because when you release ladybugs, they often disperse from where you're actually putting them. And there's also ladybird allies and relatives like crips, which are called mealybug destroyers that I've also used indoors for my mealybug outbreaks. And I don't bring them in as often, largely because they do have a tendency to get attracted to lights and I find myself corralling them every morning in order to put them back onto the mealy bugs. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to deal with that corralling insects every morning, then maybe beneficial insects is not right for you. Now, if you're somebody who likes the idea of beneficial insects, but you live with somebody, maybe your roommate, maybe your partner, and they don't like bugs, I have to tell you, you could probably get away with it because the beneficial insects stay usually, I say usually, usually where you put them, which is near the food. It's kind of like when you're at a conference and you're super hungry and they invite you there at the conference and it's after work and it's like seven to nine and you haven't eaten yet and then all of a sudden they bring out the hors d'oeuvres. Where do people flock? They flock to that poor guy or girl who's bringing out the hors d'oeuvres. And if you're like me, I'm just kind of like there, like eating the hors d'oeuvres all the time. That's exactly what these larvae do. They get shipped to you or maybe you pick them up at your garden center and they are hungry. In the case of the green lacewing larvae, they will actually cannibalize themselves because they are so hungry they need to eat. And so they'll eat like the ones that, the biggest ones will usually eat the smallest ones. So you wanna make sure you get them to their food source ASAP. And so, you know, these guys are not gonna wind up in your bed or in your cupboards or anything along those lines. So all I'm saying is that if your roommate or your partner, you know, they just, they, <laughs> what they don't know won't hurt them. So typically if you release insects, they stay 
on the leaves where you put them. And atypically, you know, when they develop wings, in this case, my green lacewing wound up on my table while I'm doing integrated pest management. I mean, come on, go figure. Another reason around integrated pest management that, that may not be right for you. So I am talking about green lacewing larvae. I am not sure where it is native across the world and you might not be able to get certain beneficial insects in your part of the globe. So you have to look into what is native to your habitats because releasing insects that are not native to your habitat may actually be a problem. So you want to make sure that you're releasing something that is not going to ruin the ecosystem outside of your house in the event that something flies out your window. And another reason why beneficial insects might not be right for you is if you're in your beginning journeys of your house plant owner phase. So maybe you only have one, two, three, four, five, maybe only 30 plants. I don't know, 30 is quite a lot for, for anybody, but it might not be enough for bringing in beneficial insects because typically you have to buy them in bulk. So I'm talking about like hundreds to thousands of insects. And it does make sense for me because I have over a thousand plants and I've been bringing them into my home even with hundreds of plants. And I've found that to be a much better solution because I love that they work even when I'm not. And I'm not there with like the horticultural oil or the neem spray trying to get every single crack and crevice of my plant. I just find them to be much more effective because that's what they were born to do. And um, so if you're somebody who just has a few plants um, or even several dozen, it might not actually be a good investment for you. Which brings me to the next point, it is an investment. Actually bringing in beneficial insects costs some coin. So I do it as a more preventative strategy. I bring them in usually during spring, summer, and fall, and I bring them in once a month. And really the cost comes with the shipping because you have to ship it next day delivery because you don't want these things sitting in the mail. They are live creatures and they will perish if you leave them sitting in their box in heat or cold, or if you just leave them sitting in the box for too long because they do need to eat in order to be able to fulfill their life cycle. So if you don't want to actually spend that money, if you don't want to, or if you don't have that money to spend, then I would encourage you maybe to go a little bit more of a different route. Maybe you're making your own horticultural spray. That's definitely much more affordable, but I don't necessarily think that it's the most effective. So in the end, is it investing in more house plants because you haven't been able to stay on top of the horticultural oil sprays? Or is it investing in something that's a little bit more premium that is more effective over time? I don't know. You kind of have to weigh those pluses and minuses yourself. So I hope this has answered some of your last remaining questions of whether beneficial insects and integrated pest management is right for you from me and my friend, Mr. or Mrs. Lacewing.